the Yu Ming is like the female <laughs> female Yao Ming. Guys, fun fact, I met Yao Ming. And at that point, I didn't know where to go for help. Yeah. And also I believe at that time in the 90s, we're in Canada. <laughs> there was also lack of resources. Because mm, also mm-hmm. English was my second language. Hello, up cast pen. Whoa, I got so much saliva. <clears throat> All right. Huh? What's up, Outcast fans? It's Paji and Yasmin. Oh, like, let's jump right in. We had a big hiatus because we did go on a very big trip. Uh, if you haven't been following us on Instagram, follow us at, at Outcast from DA53. And uh, if you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube. It will help a lot. Hey, 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 hey. That's not the uh, sound, but close yeah, enough. Yeah, it's close enough, yes. <laughs> let's do some personal updates. Yasmin, how oh. are you? Dimale, like, let's talk about it. Dimale. <laughs> Dimale. Dimale. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's good. I'm good. It's I've been working, so work has been busy because... Prime Day is coming up. That's a big shopping holiday. And we got July 4th in three days. Well, mm-hmm. as of now that we're filming. So yeah, yeah. work's been busy. And, but, you know, I'm feeling like appreciative of where I'm at. And I was just like uh, thinking about like uh, also going through like my notebooks. Like I, I write stuff sometimes to like help me think better. And mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, life is a lot better in your late twenties than early twenties, and I feel like early twenties or before you're just trying to make sense of everything and know who you are, and you know things like that. But that's so true. All in all, before we go deeper into that, um, it's been going great. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. You know, like we just came back from New York City, right? Like. Did we have an episode after New York City yet? No, it's been no. only the vlogs. So yeah, I guess this is our true. first catch up after. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. That was a big accomplishment. Um, so proud of us. Oh, the meetup. Yeah. And yeah, this is, it's nice to catch up finally. Oh my gosh. <gasps> it was amazing to, to meet all our fans from, um, so heartfelt to see actually like real people telling you oh you made a huge difference in my life and I'm like oh my gosh and it was that moment that I realized like if I had people like us to follow you know like to learn Cantonese it would have been so awesome (laughs) actually true (laughs) yeah and and I think like for me the bigger impact is like I'm, I'm seeing all the numbers like on Instagram or YouTube like the all numbers but this meetup was like in person and, and a lot more personal yeah, meeting super. with them. And I think just like, yeah, it was tiring, exhausting, not going to lie. Uh, mm-hmm. Just because I felt like next time if we do it, I'm not going to, we're not going to do any walking in the city. Because <laughs> I think that was, that made it really tiring. Yes. Um, and we are in our late 20s already. Oh my God, guys. Like, it's like, it's, it's hard. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, but I'm excited for the next one, you know, like it will be there. Comment down below where you want us to go. Yes. <laughs> um, um, did you do give your personal update? Oh, my personal update, uh, other than the meetup, everything, like just fast forward, to be honest, we started to talk about moving to Tampa, you know, mm. um, me and my husband, but then now we're deciding to halt on that decision. Halt. Tam teng. Pause. You know my mom used to say push, push instead of pause. Push. Push. <laughs> then Sanders' dad, Portuguese, says pause. So it's like there's so many ways. <laughs> How does oh, she pu- say push? Push, I guess. <laughs> you push the door. Push the door. Not fall. Anyways. <laughs> Love you, mom. Um... Yeah, it was, uh, now we are pausing and we might be traveling Asia for, you know, just shooting content. 
That is so <laughs> exciting. I know, and I don't want to say too much about it because, like, you know, I'm like the type of person I don't want to jinx anything. So, and yeah, jinx so we'll see. Myla. Anyways, uh, if you want, if you guys want to follow that journey of mine, you can follow me at Life with Podgy. All right, there I will post stuff that is not related to Outcast. It's like you know, like the actual uh, behind the scenes struggles, uh, lame Podgy. So yeah, if you guys want <laughs> are curious, then go ahead and subscribe to that too. Life with Podgy. Well, yeah. Anyways, let's get into our first segment of today. Uh, Sanman Bodo. <laughs> Nostalgic. Oh my gosh. I don't know if y'all saw, but Google finally has Cantonese. Did you see that? I did see that. I haven't had the time to check it out yet, but did you, did you check it out? Like, well, is it legit? Because I'm sure everybody wants to know if it's legit, you know? For those who don't know Cantonese too well, maybe, mm -hmm. not that fluent, like, how is it? Well, I heard a lot of, like, comments about, like, oh, it's, like, they're, like, searching stuff, like, you know, F your mom or whatever like that, you know, like, the, 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 the uh, chou hao, you know, swear words. Of course, it's Cantonese. such a common thing for Cantonese <laughs> people to say. For anyone, not to try to see the swear word first, but it's, like, true. and then... And then I think this is generated by AI that is like kind of like not there yet. But honestly, it's way better though. You know what I mean? Like it's, it is so far from mm. what it was. I think people are being a little too, you know, a little too um, spoiled. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, the, the digital ages. But people forget that even English translation like to other languages. Too, yeah, like, it's still it's not perfect. perfect. Like if I try to translate Portuguese, because Macau still uses Portuguese as like official documents, right? Translate that to English, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't always make sense. Like it doesn't flow. Yeah, no, it doesn't. And mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's just what it is. And that's why you also need a human mind to translate. But yeah, I mean, I, I love the fact that they added Yu Ping. You know, it's Congratulations, a because, Google. You have won yeah. the heart of the Cantonese community. <laughs> yeah, but it's a great big step. And I feel like the more, you know, it's the first step. And, you know, we can report the wrongs, you know, like let's all as a community make it better. Uh, so other news, I'm like, J. Lu is pregnant. Tai <laughs> Tou. Tai Zhou Tou, J. Lu. Congratulations. Wow. If you do watch this, congratulations. Gong hei, gong hei. Or if you guys didn't know, go congratulate her now, you know. Um, I feel, I think I saw like her latest video is of her wedding, which mm. was like, you know, on YouTube, I mean. Like it was like very long time after her you know previous one which i can imagine she's so busy but damn girl wow that would be another um, like journey it's like it's crazy her life like journey is on broadcast and it's like oh <laughs> i and know you... yeah it's like if you think about like you know when you get pregnant what happens because so so much changes right mm-hmm mm -hmm. And I feel like also a lot of people, a lot of ladies, maybe like on our age, will probably be like, oh my God, she's younger than me. She's younger than us, one year old, you know? I, di I didn't realize that till like, I think a few months ago. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, she also mentioned like on her post, I think, like how she's always wanted to be a mom and then always wanted to be like, to have kids, which I think is like really respectful because there's, I feel like, or at least for me, I'm surrounded or by people or maybe like on social media, like there's so many like I'm 30 and single and I'm happy to be that way. Like, I mean, no, no offense to that, but I feel like not no offense, but like you people have their own choices. Right. Mm -mm -mm. But like for me, as someone who want to like have a family in the future, I feel it's inspiring to see someone so young be so yeah. courageous to like you know and yeah and doing what she does and also like oh God, gonna yeah, start a family yeah, yeah 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 other than that um cantonese content creators from australia and uk by the way go to macau did you see 
uh, oh, Mort, you visited our home. And Ray Law. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's who's Ray Law? I think it's the is it's the girlfriend of Ty Le, like the girl that goes with him. Uh. And they speak Cantonese, and they met in they were they they went to Hong Kong and Macau with Kebeth. Kebeth, uh, I don't know if you saw our episode with him, uh, his interview. Hilarious he guy. Mm -hmm. So funny. That is oh so God. exciting, though. I mean, yeah, visiting as he should, because there's so much content that he's been posting for the past year about Cantonese, or like Macau, Hong Kong, like all the different parts that speak Cantonese. This. <laughs> Oh my God! Did you guys, did you guys see the um, seven foot three Chinese girl hyped as the <laughs> next Yao Ming? All right, her name is Zheng Ziyu. I saw her Chinese name is uh, Cheng Ziyu. Right? Is that you? Cheng Ziyu. Oh, Cheng Ziyu. And this is why I have two minds, guys. Or not, it would be chaotic. But yeah, she's like Liu Ban Yu Ming is like the female <laughs> female Yao Ming. Guys, fun fact: I met Yao Ming. Well, I mean, define met, right? Like, I I did like shook, shake his hand one time in the. How did you know? Did you have to like? <laughs> oh, I will show you guys a photo right now. It's like huge. His hand is huge. Like we danced, uh, like we danced and with kids there, like as like a like it was like a basketball event or whatever. It was great, but Peyton Gary, Gary, Perry, Gary, Gary, what? Gary Ooh. Payton was there. Oh. Gary Payton? I don't know. Like so he's also a basketball player. Like he's famous. Okay, They're okay. famous. But anyways, but I didn't know. Like you know, I was with my guy friends. Like we were like you know the dance group, and so and then we and he was like, oh guys, that's Gary Payton, and he's like, let's go, let's go say hi, and then I'm like, oh hello, and we took picture. <laughs> kind of random but like but anyways. the way the video that of her like playing basketball it was so funny because it was just like boop 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 block boop block boop block bro <laughs> oh did she miss <laughs> she missed the first time <laughs> like it's like even she misses it's okay at least they have a tall person bro think about it though if you're that tall like you know if you're not a basketball player like it's hard like i don't know like what do you it's hard as in life oh yeah i mean my husband talks about it well before he used to talk about it a lot that you know he's just the only word that people describe him as is, is tall that's that's the first thing people notice <laughs> i mean and then like i mean going to airplanes isn't that, that hard oh my god like... airplanes are the worst leg space like, especially with how cheap the, the air, airlines are now. Like, if you don't fly first class or business class, your leg space is... <laughs> I think it's already small. And I'm a small person. Mm. Like, this man is taller than me, you know? Mm. It's like, why? <laughs> no, you know, I feel so bad because his legs would be, like, on the, on the aisle because it has to be diagonal. And then they would just come with the cart and then he would, like, wake up. And I'm like, oh, my God, come on. <laughs> But that's crazy though. I feel like it's so weird because even outside of Yao Ming, there's definitely a, a couple more um, oh, yeah. pe tall people that went on the news for being the tallest men. The I don't guy know if you, mm -hmm. from uh, Rush Hour. Remember the. Oh, damn! Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. But like, yeah, why? Like, why in China? Why North China? It's so random too, and it's always. Yes, <laughs> so you see, people like, those say dogs? that North China Chinese is tall, like can get taller, like more. I think something about the food. I forgot uh, what. Like, like, like I think up there is more bland or, or something. <laughs> food. And then and then you see those uh, documentaries about how they live. Like <laughs> their bed is so tiny compared to their body, and it's <laughs> it's hard. It and like shoes hard. and pants. How do you, you know? That's true, it sucks. I saw a comment like, oh, Yao Ming think he's slick. <laughs> like, <laughs> implying. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's really cool. Well. Yes, and hey, hooray for women. Like, you went to a women's side, that jean, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. that tall jean. It's like, this jean just seems like it just chooses random people. So, all right. And, God knows that yes, me and I need therapy. Do you need therapy? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> we, we wish we <laughs> Is there a better help sponsor us? <laughs>
Well, let's pop into it, guys. And find out more about her. Hello, Outcast fans. Today Hello. we have a super, super, super special guest, you know, like this is someone that helps with your mental health. Ah, uh, yes, mean, right? That's important. Super important, yes. Um, so today we have Vera of Therapy with Vera. Yay! Yay. Welcome, welcome, Fun Ying. Thank you. <laughs> so ah. I guess you can introduce yourself a little bit. Who are you? Where you're from? With your ethnicity? Okay. Okay. So I'm from because oh. I know how I know how to speak Cantonese, uh -huh. but I'm not that fluent because oh. I don't really I don't really practice I don't really practice it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I've been in I, we me and my family we moved to Toronto for thirty years now. So we've been living here for okay. thirty years. Like with my family, mm -hmm. and I, well, I was here since I was grade six. So I study like from elementary, high school, university. And um, so I'm a registered social worker where I study social work in, mm. in school. And then I became a social worker after university where I provide counseling and case management for individuals in the community with um, support with individuals with depression, anxiety, self-esteem. Yeah. Then during then I started my practice talk therapy with Vera in 2020. That's when I started my practice, where I'll just be doing uh, counseling for indiv individuals similar to the issues, like I said earlier, depression, anxiety, self-esteem, intergenerational trauma. Yeah. Then eventually I have branched out, not just doing counseling, because I also do like speaking engagement on anti-Asian racism and mental health. And I've been speaking a lot on media outlet on mental health and anti-Asian racism as well. Wow, that's a lot. It's a, it's a lot to cover. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. I feel like emotionally, it's also a lot for you to take care of all of it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because obviously, like, when I started my practice, I was just like, I'm just going to support individuals. And I didn't think that I was going to go where right now 95% of my clients are Asian. Like, mm -hmm. even when I first started my practice, uh, which I didn't think, I'm like, why, is, why all of a sudden all the Asian are coming to me? Then I'm like, no, we want to work with somebody who have similar experiences, like growing yeah. up with like mental health. I think mean, that's also very yeah. important. Like even even like uh, you know, me and Yasmin, like I feel like there's a lot of stuff that only Yasmin can understand when I talk to her. You know what I mean? Like it's very specific though, and it's like, and you're there, and it's like, what else? <laughs> yes, I think that's very important because I think with growing up in an immigrant household. As you know, it's a lot of expectation. Yeah, like for the children, like for like our parents have a lot of expectation for our kids. Yeah, and is yes. that is that how it all started? Like, or just why did you kind of choose this journey? Your inspiration? What's your why? so when? Oh, that's a good question. So when we <laughs> when we first moved to Canada, I was twelve years old, and we've experienced like my family and we experienced like a lot of racism, discrimination. But I've also struggled with bullying in school which really impact my mental health so and which then I suffered depression anxiety and low self-esteem but then at that point I didn't know where to go for help yeah and also I believe at that time in the 90s we're in Canada <laughs> there was also lack of resources because mm, also mm -hmm. English was my second language that was making even more tough that is hard. for me to, yeah for me to go for help so then I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me, after high school, let me go into university to do my social work where I can support individuals like from like who are immigrant who will have similar trauma as well. That's so nice. Yeah. That's beautiful. I see. No, that's really great. Like, I wish there's somebody by us in Macau that we can talk to like this. Like, I mean... You know, I, I I hear now they have maybe counselors in schools sure. in yes. Macau. Um, I know a person that went to, you know, like counseling in Macau. And then the first thing the, the doctor would just ask is, uh, do you want to take this medication? And it's like, if you say mm. no, they're like, I can't help you. Like, and yeah. it's like, right. what? Like, right. there's no one to talk to. It's crazy. It's not, yeah, like, because I also learned, like, when I was in school doing social work, I was also learning it's not just about, pushing for medication because yeah. you need therapy 
and medication, they go hand in hand together. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's a lot more care. It's a lot more, uh, it's a lot less care if you just be like, hey, here's a quick solution for you to balance your hormones a little bit and hoping that would fix your life. But at the same time, the medication, it takes like four to six weeks to work. Mm. It's not going to work like, it's oh, not going to work all, like uh, really quick. Because mm. usually the, the doctor have to, like, you have to test out whether the side effects or any yeah. sort. Mm. There's a lot of different side effects, right? Usually people can't tolerate. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And hard. just like back to the point when you said like, yeah, you didn't know who to go to. I can like relate to that because it's like, you know, sometimes it's hard, especially for Asian cultures to like, go to your parents or to feel comfortable enough to talk about mental health because then it's like go drink more water <laughs> or something <laughs> i was like what are you talking about huh yeah like, and like do you know that there's worse like scenarios in philippines like <laughs> okay, people starve to death <laughs> and you're literally complaining on your bed right now I'm like, hey, yeah I'm yeah because yeah. i think maybe to them it sounds like you're complaining and ungrateful maybe right. at least for yeah for us like having filipino parents like it, it feels like that yeah. but i also think there's also that like, there's a lot of stigma you know that right because in like think about like, your mom tie. like why why do you have a problem mm. like, the teasing, like, you know like the word teasing uh. that's how they how like our parents would say no no and you make you like they make, they make you feel like a bother so it's like yeah you don't want to bother your parents obviously so yeah. you'd rather just keep it in and then keeping it in is what makes it like you know like yes if it, I, I heard that that's what make you explode right and that's not great for sure mm -mm. it makes you feel no. like like there's something wrong with you yeah. right 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 but but the thing is there is already something wrong with you but you just don't know where to go for help. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right? And, and then, like, if we say that there's something wrong with us, like, uh, it's like it's like your mom is saying, like, like try and say that you're being weak, you know? And yes. you don't want to, like, disappoint yeah. your parents. Because like, it's like, it's like they're like, you just got to persist, you know? You just got to persist and, like, go through the hardship and, and not be weak mentally, right? Right. I, I think that's maybe, like, for them, right? Maybe that's what they had to go yes, through and yes. then expecting us to be able to do the same even though we li live in a completely different environment. I know. Yeah. It's just, it, it's, yeah, like, this is, like, bonkers. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be like you, mom, and dad, because of how you guys pout through things. This is, yeah. like, cause it's not, like, it's not good for, like, it's not good because even now as they get older, you probably know, and I'm like, you guys need therapy. Like, no! <laughs> oh my god! I want to give therapy so mom. bad. I wish it was just like a patch and you can just like, <laughs> therapy! <laughs> therapy! <laughs> and they can just... All right. You I'm know? Holistic. <laughs> yeah. like, like, I see it now. Oh my god, I see it so clear like that. Oh, I wish, no. It's true. It's like you need, you need another set of eyes to yes, see. Yes. <laughs> Hold on. Yes, but, but like, then yeah. But you know that they're also in denial. They're like, I don't have any. There's nothing wrong with me. Oh, uh, that's true. Like, why do we need it? Like, the, the pride. pride. Yeah. The pride yes. is so yeah. high. Like, oh my gosh. But God for and it's like there's the mother card. Like, I, if I say so, it's it's that. Like, it's like, all right. I don't wanna. I don't wanna all argue. The, it's like all the momentai. Like, yeah, yeah, momentai. Like they're putting uh, yeah. on you. The <laughs> defensive. Yeah. 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 So, what do you think is the hardest part? of your job because i mean it's, it sounds like a very hard job obviously mm -hmm, like sure. to be there for someone like i mean some fu sai. 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 sai thank you thank you thank sai. you <laughs> like, like a <laughs> well i have to realize i can't help everyone even though like mm -hmm. i might I, i'm like even though my brain like no you should be helping everyone mm -hmm. but i know it recognize i can't and also like that i'm also not a good fit for everybody but, right based on my therapy um files mm. or my expertise like i'm not like i sometimes i have to decline mm. people when they come to do consult like based on situations exactly and yes like issues right like, based on whatever the issues that they wanting to like they wanting to work on yeah like, i just don't have the expertise and i don't feel comfortable and i said that like has nothing against you just i like, don't feel comfortable so i also don't want to waste your money that's your mm -hmm. time it's honest. Right. That's yeah, if I can support you, right? Because yeah. then, because then they'll come in with a certain expectation, 
mm-hmm. thinking mm-hmm. that I will be able to help solve their issue, but not really. Like I'm not there to solve the issue. Mm-hmm. I'm here to guide them. I see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. That's true. That's why you're not a doctor. It's like a therapy. It's yes. not doctor. No, it's your therapy because I'm coming with you in this journey. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I have to like every time when I started doing my during my consultation and during my first appointment with my clients, I have to tell them like just to let you know like this is the expectation of what you mm. setting expect. the expectations exactly mm-hmm. right because then like your 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 expectation also has to be realistic. Because I also have to be honest and like, well, that's not realistic. If you're just thinking that coming into therapy and yeah. thinking that like you can just be here for like a month or two months, I'm like, no. yeah, that's true. It's like buying a gym membership and just going there to walk around. You know, like yeah. you're not really working on yourself. You're just like okay, showing up, right? You're just showing yeah. up. Sure, we can. But you gotta up. really do the work. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's right because i think some people they don't they don't they just think that oh i've never been i'll just come once a month right and i'm like no that's not that's not mm. that's not really therapy or like i'll just come like you know one to two months i think that things will get resolved and i'm like okay then i'll just provide you with fast solution yeah we're not really doing the work yeah that's true yeah 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 that makes sense so how are the like what about like the situation now and the general the general mental health of the mm-hmm. Asian Canadians now? It's really difficult to say because I find that the majority of my clients that that they are coming to me to work on it's when they get triggered from their parents. Uh, when oh, they're, like, is it they're, mostly like, with the parents? Probably it's something right? to, like mostly majority with the parents. Sometimes about work, but majority it's about their parents. Sometimes mm-hmm. they do, they just get so triggered because yeah. our parents are so critical, oh. and then and then we started to become critical of us, yeah. like of, our, of ourselves. Right? I think that's what that's what it is, and it's it's not because it's so ingrained in us. So then, like I also have to tell them, like we you we also need to reframe the way of our own narrative. Like mm-hmm. the way of how we talk to ourselves, that's yeah. also very. Important. I feel like that's the hardest part. Yeah, it is. It is. I think it's when they get triggered, they don't know they they can't regulate their emotions. I think mm-hmm. that's also one one of the big things. They get and then quite, you're there yeah. to kind of help them through exactly. that, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. And I think that because even in my intake assessment, like the first one to two sessions, like there's a lot of mm-hmm. questions I have to go through. Yeah, I always ask them about the childhood experience because that's like the key. To why are they whatever the experience the issue is right now? Do, do usually people immediately like cry? <laughs> Some of them I would cry. I bet I would just like, <laughs> and you know, Yasmin, you know, I'm like I start talking like one sentence. <laughs> do not want. I feel like for me, I I just forgot a lot of it. Yeah, that's that's, that's how, how I coped. I think I just there's so many stories I just don't remember. I remember some parts, right? But right. a lot of things. That's quite normal because that's what when I ask about my with, about when I ask my clients about some of the stories or some of the things, a lot yeah. of them they can't remember. Even for me, when I went to therapy, I'm like I can't remember. That's, that's because fair. we suppress yeah. the bad part, right? Yeah, because yeah, you want to be happy, and it's like if you can't do anything about it, like you don't have to like. Shove it down, shove it down. Don't think yeah, about shove it. it down. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Is the in terms of like your your clients, like what's the most age group age group that I do? Yeah, yeah. Um, I do I do usually work with clients between twenty to forties. That's okay. the thing I always ask my client, can you just tell me approximately how old you are? Because <laughs> then I'll tell you why I, I tell you why I work with them. Because I used to, like, in the community prior to my practice, I worked from, like, teenagers to seniors. Mm. But then I, once I started my practice, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to niche it down so that just for 20 to 40. I think mm-hmm. that's how I'm able to relate and they can be able to. Able for to sure, relate. yeah, yeah. You probably, yeah. like, it's easiest when, when you can relate to where they're at in life, exactly. right? What stage of life. Exactly. Um, because, of, like, yeah, <laughs> when I used to work with different, like, depends. With the diff- with the younger generation, sometimes it's really harder to harder to relate with the teens, mm-hmm. right? And then the older, they just remind me of 
my parents. <laughs> so like, <laughs> the, but I mean, it's probably you probably don't see a lot of like parents' age as your clients, though, right? Like, when do they? When I used to work in the community, when I used to work in the community, there like, were? I, I have no ch- choice because no I choice. have to work on those like age groups, right? Oh. Because like, but, yeah. Yeah, but I thought were like, they willing they, to? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, are they they're like willing? are they in the age group where they're just were they like willing to open up or they're like, they're like I mean you have to build a rep, like you have to build a relationship, mm-hmm. you gotta earn yeah. their trust. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, right? Because they're not. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I, have to, I have to do it in Cantonese. In oh yeah, is your sessions like are they like sometimes full Cantonese, full English, or so in the when I used to work in a community. Um, it's hard because it's there's certain terms I can't translate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in yes, back into Canto no. and English, it's just mm-hmm. hard. Um, but some of them do understand, so I'll do like my best. I'll just do like very gandan, like Cantonese, or like very gandan. They might be able to understand. But in right now in my session, some of my client will tell me in Cantonese because there's certain words it's just easier for them, yeah. or they don't want their partner to hear the session they'll tell me in Cantonese oh. I'm like okay I can, under- I can understand it basically you've been in, in therapy sessions with young and old and and there is a difference like in comparison in, there is because obviously like because of the cognitive like the cognitive yeah. you can't go too like you cannot go too hard on the older generation right because mm-hmm. it'll just be too much but with the younger generation you can go a little further but like you can go through the past like the, mm-hmm. but I think I felt like the older. I mean, sorry, with the same age generation, the younger generation, like I'm able to build a rapport because I'm like the same age as yeah. them. But with the older, than like, well, like I'm how sang, you know, like you like gong, yeah, like there's like mm-hmm. the age difference. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's that you you're younger, so you have to respect. You can't really ask exactly, them, ask exactly, them. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or like, or I find that like nowadays. Like I have had older people, like the older generation, reach out to me, but I don't. I just don't work with them. Mm-hmm. And apparently, like they will tell me either the kids will tell me they need therapy, right? Like I said earlier, because or in my session, because I only work with individual, and because there's so many different family dynamic with their own family, like with their parents, I tell them like, you and your mom and your siblings really need to go for family therapy. Mm-hmm. You can't just be like one like you come here and you try to fix it but mm-hmm. they're not willing to change it that's also not going to help either that's that's when i have to like let them know that they're not capable of changing right and also like i have to work with them about with the my client about like the acceptance piece and the grieving mm-hmm. stages right there's a lot grieving of grieving as in like grieving and accepting that this is how it's going to be but they're not going to change and then mm-hmm. it's sad that you didn't have a good childhood, right? Because that's usually yeah. how child was be happy. Because I find that with a lot of my clients, like my clients, it's they they're parentified. Like they become they become the parents of their parents when they were younger. So their parents really rely on them for like support. Uh, like you uh-huh, know, like okay. uh, talking to them like translating. about their problem. Yeah. Trans- not translating, but talking to them about their problem. Oh, okay. because because their parents have, no, have nobody to talk to then they went they go to their kids right bro and traumatize you with stuff that you don't need to know exactly uh, exactly well i mean i want to know how does therapy like like a talk with therapy uh, with vera is like like how like can you share like what what, what would like someone anyone like anyone who's new, interested right yeah. wants to what to expect yeah right. yeah like Right. So yeah, we usually if they're nervous about it, maybe because it, it's oh, scary yeah. to go to a therapist and try sure. to like dig into my most hurtful moments. Oh, like I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> well, first I think you want to do a consultation, right? With each like with the therapist, making sure that like you know their style, whether they can support mm-hmm. you, the expertise. Okay. Like I think like this like a fee? before the actual the there's the consultation it's free. Like it's a complimentary consultation. You Just to see like, if it's like a good fit for both exactly, sides. Right? Exactly, exactly. I know some therapists, they don't do the consultation, but yeah. I offer consultation because I just want to make sure that. No, that's I'm great. A, I don't I'm think a, I had one. Yeah. I'm going to jump straight into it. Therapy. <laughs> because you want to ask like, where did he can support you? Or what you want to get a sense of like a feel with their background, 
um, yeah. with the therapy style and with their expertise, et cetera, right? And mm-hmm. they can tell you like what the session looked like. Because I always, I always tell them like in my in my session for the intake, usually it takes like one like one to two sessions because there's just a lot of questions I have to go through. Yeah. And I have to ask them sometimes like, I would tell them like, instead of you going to details, we will. I just need to sum. I just need you to summarize because we just only have a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. And then after the in, after we finish intake, then we'll look about we'll talk about your goal for therapy. Like, what does what do you want me to support you? What are you wanting to work on? So then I always tell them like, if you provide me with two, like like three to five goals, for example, you also need to prioritize your goal. What which one you want to work on first? Because we yeah. can't be going all over the place. Yeah, and no, I mean, just, I feel like that's yeah. very realistic because as we talked about before, like maybe sometimes people come in expecting to fix everything, right? So it's important to like, just focus on one thing that That's they right. want to fix with you. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. That's right. Realistic goals. Oh my yeah. God. Even, even fitness instructor, like you have realistic goals, right? Right. It's true. That's right. That's right. I always ask them like, you know, how long do you think that, you know, for example, like how long do you want to be in therapy for? So for example, like mm-hmm. I said earlier, like, are you expecting to be in therapy to be fixed within two to three months? Well, that's really unrealistic because we then we'll just focus on one issue yeah. at a time. We won't be focusing on like all of the issue, that's or we won't even process your childhood experience, like your childhood trauma, yeah. if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, then you'd be able to just waste it. Just exactly, waste it exactly. And I think that, um, like the healing journey, it's not like a, it's not linear, right? It's mm-hmm. been, it can be all over the place. Like sometimes yeah. you have you have 10 sometimes you have 10 step forward and sometimes you have like I know backwards. and then so it feels like when when you're going backwards it's, it just feels like you're back to where you started and then you're like oh like all the work for nothing that's true that's not true because then we need to start reframing right then we need to like, like we need to think about what worked in the past right then we need to start pulling those skills and strategy or what is it that what is it that was making you feeling you're going backwards well i feel like i'm in a therapy <laughs> session <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> oh brains on zoom <laughs> guys that's crazy well do do like your clients actually like do, do you let them like um contact you if it's like an emergency or something i don't know like do they like do yeah that? what's the boundary for you yeah boundary what is boundary so I have had clients trying to contact me when I'm when it's an emergency. I just have to like email them back. Like I'm like I'm like I don't respond to emergency emails. Um, mm-hmm. I can provide you with the crisis line, crisis number. Okay. Um, okay. yeah, like crisis information. Like I would tell them straight. Like we're not. I'm not a cri- Like I'm not a crisis. Yeah. Um, if I have availability to sh- to fit you in for that day yeah. or for that time, sure. But there's also no guarantee yeah or sometimes that they write me um like they write me like a fun like a what would happen right like they pre write me but the appointment's not till like in two weeks then i tell them like jump that down in your notes so we can discuss it because i'm not gonna because i'm also not gonna read your email and responding to your email because we're not we're not in session that's yeah. true yeah. Oh my if god, it, what about it, with friends? Like <laughs> and like would you like out of nowhere? I mean, would they be like, can you analyze me? Or like or or or, or you would be like, um you gotta, like, you, gotta, like, you gotta like suck you gotta like keep it in or something. Yeah, because <laughs> like, like you you know this phrase where like, oh, your friends are your free therapist or something. Like when you <laughs> I've done so many free therapy sessions with my friends and like, oh my gosh. <laughs> right? like Does it help? It, I mean do they, yeah, do they thank you for it? Or do you be yeah. like, do you yes. see what happened? I don't know. I mean. <laughs> like, yes and no. So that's why, like, yeah. nowadays when I first meet people, like, um, I'm very, like, like, especially I go on dates. <laughs> I'm, like, go on dates. On my dating profile, I don't even say I'm a psychotherapist. Forget that. Because then, like, people, because yeah. they will start telling, excuse me. <clears throat> They'll start telling me about their, like, history of like problem like oh my god oh no no we're gonna ask for them yeah it's it's like you have to you're listening on your job and you're listening in your dating life you're always just listening yeah i'm like i don't want to give out advice i don't want to listen like i'm already like i'm already like i'm already burnt out like Mm -hmm. i don't have a lot of energy 
Like yeah. today, it's therapied oh, out. Yeah. 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 Too much of anything is not good, guys. Yeah. Like, and yeah. now just tell them, like, you need to go talk to your therapist. You don't That's have one. I can, give, I can give you a therapist name. That's true. That's smart. I can refer you. Can refer you. <laughs> exactly. So, like, talking about, like, how, you know, um, you don't really tell people you're a therapist, but, like, how how do you personally cope then like with your own emotions I know you you mentioned you have a therapist yeah but even that like it's still scheduled right but in your oh, daily sure. life like how how do you cope with um why well, anxiety because I have we have it I have anxiety for sure like I'm like and you know yes me no she, she deals <laughs> with it she deals with it <laughs> and, you know, like, oh, how would you deal with it? You know, if, if someone didn't even have, like, a yes mean to talk to, you know what I mean? No. So oftentimes, I also have anxiety. So whenever I feel off, like, my body, like, with my, like, heart palpitation, I just feel off. When my body, I also learned to, like, I would put um ice pack, I'd go into my freezer, and put it on my face. So Literally shock- cool it down. Yeah, I was, like, shock my, like, shocking my system. Oh, Because I'm, like, because, um... Because when your body is not regulate, you need something to regulate, like regulate yourself, right? You need to feel like you, you need to do something like out of the ordinary, right? To kind of do like, <laughs> yes, oh. yes. Or I'll do like, I'll go for a walk. Like if I have breaks in between or like I really need to get outside, like I'll go for a walk just to clear my mind. So it's something that's more basically physical, like physical, being- f- yeah. But I also learn because I also teach my client, like it's also being able to acknowledge and accept um your feelings whatever your feeling mm. is your emotion mm. like it's normal yeah I, yeah I feel like that like for me is the hardest part in, in terms of like accepting like okay this is what I'm feeling this is what I'm going through right now it's it's the same narrative of like my parents uh, not my yes. parents but like my experience of saying like oh there's something wrong with you so fix the emotion you know like don't you're right. not supposed to feel that way yeah. right but that's, that's when true. you start personalizing it right because then you start thinking it's your fault of feeling this I'm just saying Frank feeling this way then I have to tell my client like I have to remind myself or remind my client like there's nothing wrong with you feeling this way it is completely normal to feel this way and 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 then you have to like recognize like okay you know what's going on in my mind are these thoughts or these facts right like trying to reframing it so that mm-hmm. you're not so that it also helps you to regulate yourself a little bit better mm-hmm. yeah. because once you start accepting it's a normal feelings a normal reaction then you're then you're able to move on to um the let go stage because you can mm-hmm. let go when you haven't even like process and accept your emotions yeah that's true, that's true. yeah yeah because i think that a lot of people they just want to go through the let go but you're just shuffling aside you haven't yeah. fully processed. Oh, I guess that that's a good point, right? Like letting go versus shoving it down and ignoring it is very different, right? That's like, right. That's right. You don't, that's yeah. right. Because if you haven't let go, it's still going to come up in the future, but not right now. It will come up when you get triggered. Yeah, no. Like yeah. that's why I can't stay like lo- too long with my parents because it's like <sighs> there's a lot shoved down, you know? Like, and it's just so you have you can't pretend for so long and it's just like you can tell like tension all the time so people yeah. like you don't like people just want to separate and just all right do our own thing <laughs> when you you want your space right like you just want your space but then yeah. sometimes our parents they don't know boundaries they're like yeah. why why do you need your space what's why do you need it? there's a lot of space yeah so I mean, <laughs> what are the signs um, or like, you know, like when should someone think of seeking therapy? Like I know that someone has to be ready to seek. That's therapy. right. That's right. That's right. But I think that if you, if, you know, if whatever situation or issue that you're in, it's already impacting like your lack of motivation, concentration, procrastination, or like low mood, sadness, hopelessness, um, helplessness, or like, you know, there's also like, other than like lack of appetite or overeating or like like impacting your sleeping pattern doesn't mean yeah. that there's something going on with you or you just can't seem you've been like ruminating the same thing yeah. over and over again and you can't seem to get out of it that's also a sign right to 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 start thinking maybe i need to talk to a professional 
mm. to help me get so, through this. So something that kind of persists in your daily life, even though That's nothing right. really, nothing major happened, you still feel a certain... Like, right, right. Or like you've used it, you've been experiencing this for like, you know, I would say more than two weeks, this, these persistent like feelings or these persistent symptoms that's when you need to also start thinking like, maybe I really need to get some help, get some support on how to manage them better or how mm -hmm. to deal with these, right? Yeah. First you gotta accept. Okay, I think I also have parents who have kids that work with me. Um, oh, okay. they, came, they came to me because they wanna break the pattern. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Break, oh, because, yeah. Break because, the chain. Yes, because they wanna, because they know that they're critical they're hard on themselves but they also mm. see that they're hard on the kids and they don't want right right exactly so they don't want to be hard they don't want to be critical because then I also explained to them like they're just kids they're not yes. like they're, yeah. they're still learning they're young right like obviously they're yeah. going to make mistakes yeah. because if you're going to be hard and critical your kids are not going to come to you your kids going to go to the other partner mm -hmm. go to your partner for support right especially I don't think I don't think that yeah I also have like parents who are really angry and then mm -hmm. I have to like process like what was it that makes you really angry is it because they're not listening to you right like your kids not listening or or etc I'm like but also you have to understand like your kid they're like I'm just yeah. like they also have like different developmental milestones yeah so they're not yeah. adult because sometimes I'm wondering like are you treating them like an adult That's thinking true. that thinking they don't that know time yeah. too right the yeah. time is different for them like it's like one minute lasts way longer for a kid, you know? Or they'll start reflecting. Well, when I was my kid's age, I was like this and this and this. And like, but your kids are not you. That's, That's when I have to start, yeah, like, yeah. remind them. I'm like, they're their own person. Right? Yeah. yeah. Makes so much sense. Oh, my That's, God. That's a good tip. Yeah. And what about, like, I guess for the other way around, like, you know, if there are like pe people in the family that just can't change but they're still family like what is what is one i guess one tip to deal with that for for good question I feel like that, that's like so the common in Asian i think right i think it's like the boundaries right but i think that's a lot of people it's not like that you can just cut off because of the obligation i think there's right, an right. obligation that we have like in the chi in the asian culture yeah mm -hmm. and you also have to like that's when you start need to reframe that like our parents, it's getting older, so yeah. they're gonna need support. But can you be? Can you show compassion mm. to your parents, right? Because yeah. we don't know how. Yeah. I'm just saying, like we don't know how long they're gonna live, mm -hmm. and they're probably lonely because they have nobody to talk to. That's what they come to you for, like yeah. talking yeah. and stuff, mm -hmm. right? I think you just said you can still set boundaries. Like I'm only available, like you know, I'm only available yeah. with the state of time. I'm only, I'm only can call you when I'm available. Because like you know your what, sanity exactly. Because you know how parents are like, why aren't you calling me? What's wrong with you? Like, you know, why? Like, you know what? Like, why aren't you picking up your phone? I think that's all. Like, I get that too. I get that manipulation. I'm like, because I'm busy. I'm working. I'm dealing with my, everyone's problem every day, mom. Like, I can't be talking on the phone. I'll call you when I'm available. Like, I think that's also something that they have to recognize. Yeah. yeah. My mom would like call me and like I, I would like not I would be busy and I'm like I would feel so bad because when I call her she's busy or she doesn't answer on purpose I have no idea but like it makes me feel so guilty and then like dude I overthink and I just like oh what did I do wrong and she's actually right. chill she's just fine she just didn't care like she just there's nothing yeah. doesn't it's okay to feel bad you didn't do anything wrong right because then right? because then like because because but then yes you're allowed to feel bad. But you have to recognize like the fact it's like I wasn't available, right? Because then that's when that's when you need to start like um, reframing like the facts versus thought, which I tell my to my client like what a fact and what a thought. Fact, thought. What's a fact? What's a thought? <laughs> yeah, actually, more. that's really good. It's like good for your like emotions when you're feeling so much. Then you be like, okay, my logical brain is saying this is a fact. This is just a passing thought. <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's right. you know that's why that's why i love my husband so much because he he does that with for me like i'm just like oh this so sad i miss my mom and it's like and then she, he just like lay down the facts oh well when's the next time you're gonna visit her and i'm like oh, and then like and we talked it out i'm like i'm fine i guess i'm fine <laughs> it's nice fact gotta have the that's, fact that's person good yeah Keep you gotta mind. you gotta focus on the facts right because the fact it also brings you back to reality 
That's yeah because I think sense. a lot of a lot of the ways like we see ourselves is it's all not facts like That's it's true. so different how people see you versus how you see yourself yes. it's, it's, it's just not based on facts all the time yeah no. and no. then it just changes your whole reality no especially when you grow up like hearing like you're not good enough at, mm-hmm. like, in, like, every single time right like, right and then you're not you gonna gotta, feel like you're good enough and you gotta really you also got to reflect on like whose expectation are they mm. like whose voice is this right the critical like the inner critic like whose voice is it that's right? is my it, voice it, no but is it yourself or is it someone else right like is it someone else that was being critical to you growing up because that's also very important that's true <sighs> yeah, that makes so much sense yeah, it does. <sighs> We needed this. This is like a mini yeah. uh, consultation therapy. I know you said you me. won't give free advice, but this is <laughs> this is so good. A lot already. Yes. Thank you so much to the founder of Talk Therapy with Vera. Yeah. Can you, you guys, like tell us you. what are like you know um, people expecting from you like soon maybe like from Talk or where Therapy they can check with Vera? You out, you know, exactly. Um, work. Shout out. So you can go on my website. You can find me on my website talktherapywithvera.com. On my Instagram handle, talktherapy.with.vera. It felt like a therapy session, so go check her out because yeah. it was unintentional, but already, you know. Mm-hmm. You guys hope you good. guys also felt that, yeah. And, you know, people that didn't believe in therapy before, like, hope this, you know, like, shines a light on it. Because, you know, a lot of people probably don't yeah. believe in it. That's and, true. And, then, and I think it's great also that you set expectation from the get-go because, you know, you're not wasting anybody's time or money. Yeah. Just blunt and direct. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I always have to tell people, very, like, I'm, I'm direct. Yeah. Do it right. Yeah, you gotta yeah. do it. You got to do it right. right. All right. That's right. You want to fix yourself? Do it right. Do it right away. Just do it. Thank, Thank you so you much. So much. Thanks, guys, for listening. Okay, I'll talk to you guys. Bye.